learn this. Shut the f*** up <laughs> and don't don't speak on me anymore. You guys are about to get a Strickland MGK sandwich because we're going to start with that story and we're going to end with that story. I'm going to tell you all the background on it right now and then I'm going to show you how they got into it in the last segment. And in between, we're going to look at uh, Marab and Dana White blowing up at each other. I, whenever I think about Sean Strickland, just his personality, I seriously think that he's like Tommy from Goodfellas, you know? Like if you're at like a, a card game and Sean is constantly breaking some guy's balls like the waiter or something like that, and then one day the waiter goes, hey, why don't you go F yourself, Sean? And you're all... Tell the truth, you're looking for sympathy. Is that it, sweetie? Why don't you go F yourself, Tom? Oh. Oh. You're going to let him get away with that? Hey, Sean, you're going to let him get away with that? What's the world coming to? You're going to let this punk get away with that? What's the matter? What's the world coming to? I think Sean gets up and goes and beats the guy half to death. You're all, dude, we were just joking. He's all, what, man? What, what a fucking man? sick maniac. I don't know if you're kidding. What do you mean you're kidding? You're, you're breaking my balls? I'm fucking kidding with you. You yeah. shoot the guy? What? You said he was pressing me. You're like, it was a joke, man. Here is my kind of high-level opinion on this when it comes to both Conor McGregor and Sean Strickland going off on MGK, all right? MGK's a rock star. Jared Leto is a rock star. Jared Leto, there's, there is nothing you could say about MGK that cannot be said about Jared Leto. Jared Leto was always at, at UFC events. What's the difference? How does MGK end up, you know, having Connor throw a drink at him and then spaz out on him and try to fight him, with a broken leg, by the way, at, uh, at the Grammys? And then Sean Strickland, for some reason, like MGK... He's got to get him. Jared Leto's there all the time. No one wants to go after Jared Leto. What is the difference? Okay. This is a hypothesis. Okay. Hypothesis. Here is my hypothesis. My hypothesis is that standing next to MGK is Megan Fox. An absolute dime piece. A smoke show that a Neanderthal like Connor or Sean Strickland or me would have a hard time looking at and being that close without being like, God damn. I wonder what she looks like without that on. I wonder what she would feel like if I slid my hand down the side of her arm. Just, I bet she's got soft skin. And you look at her and then like, you know, that's just like, I mean, if you're a straight man, your brain's going to do that on autopilot anyway. You know, like you can't look at a girl like that and not be like, oh my God, you know? But I think where Sean and Connor differentiate is the where they, the where what the way their brains think is they're like what on earth like how is that guy with her i am beating that guy in every single category that matters i would whip his ass in a fight i would whip his ass in a fight i would whip his ass in a fight and also you know and then you go to connor he's like i'm richer than him i'm just as famous if not more famous actually i'm more famous you know i got i got a better boat i got a better house i own an entire country what are you doing standing next to that nerd? You know, because that's the only thing that's different in my, you know, what's different about MGK than Jared Leto? Nothing except Megan Fox. So that is my theory on why Connor and Sean Strickland get into it with MGK while not getting into it with all these other little fem, femboy nerds. Did you just say you're a Neanderthal that would attack MGK? No, I'm saying that I am a straight guy like you guys and on autopilot, I'm going to look at Megan Fox and go, oh my God. I have one of those at home. Better than her too. See, mine is really smart as well as being better looking than Megan Fox. And you can find that out for yourself on Play With Matches with Gabby and Jesse, our other channel. Like when those two Cavender sisters, the fucking, you know. They the, did not like me. They hated her. At the Jake Paul fight, they were like, you know, they're like the new hot shit twins coming out of my really University of girls. Miami. Yeah, and they're in like mini skirts. And like when we walked by them, they like looked at her and they were like, who's this bitch? They like... They really like gave her like they, hard eyes. They gave me one of these and like at the I same time they were like, Ugh, yeah, it was, fuck you, girl. That's I did not get prettier. nice girl vibes. Yeah, from them. they were like, we're supposed to be the prettiest bitches in the front row. Get the fuck out of here with that. And I was like, and then they looked at me. They're all sucky dick. I was like, Ew. no, no, I've never fantasized about twin point guards licking my balls before. Ew, just kidding. No, they're like they actually look Gross. like mean girls. That yeah, would, they would think they're doing you a favor. You know. They're all, ooh, you like that? You're all, not really. You guys are very entitled. I don't like it. Get, beat it. Get, get out of here with that. <laughs> get out of there. Get out of here with that entitled naked energy. Jeez. Naked Fox. But nonetheless, I'm saying Sean and Connor specifically can't be around her and him without being like, I got to get this guy. 
I gotta, I gotta take him down a peg. Okay. I got to take this little bitch down a peg unless you guys think that you have a, I mean, a better theory than me. Well, guys, I never thought that I was going to say this, but MGK has stuck a finger straight into Sean Strickland's eyeball and challenged him to a fight. He was like, listen here, Strickland, you've been talking about me. You've been talking about my lady. You want to know what's going to happen if you keep talking about me and her? I'm going to put my finger through your eyeball and you're going to like it. Not exactly like that. That may have been embellished a little bit, but he did talk real. He talked real strong at Strickland on Logan Paul's podcast. I'll show you those clips. Uh, he does not like Sean. He also, uh, he tr- he really tried to big league him. That's that's what I noticed in this thing. He big leagued him. He went with the old, I don't even know who this guy is. You know, one of those. Now, you guys might not think that that's a direct big league, but in the world of fame and money, it is, at least in uh, in MGK. I mean, honestly, that's actually a big league no matter what. You know, if some guy's coming at you and you just go, I don't even know who that is, dude. You know, you guys may recall uh, when Conor McGregor said, who the uh, F is, sorry, can't swear at the beginning of the video. Who the F is that guy? And that's literally one of the greatest owns of all time. So MGK dropped a who the F is that guy on Sean Strickland and then said a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to look at that. Uh, and then Sean Strickland responded, uh, it was a pretty good response too, you know. These guys don't have a lot in common. You know, it's one of those things where they don't have a lot in common. MGK's insult about Sean Strickland, I believe, included homophobic. Okay. I'm pretty sure that he said homophobic in his response to Strickland, where uh, you know, I know that if you're talking to a UFC audience, we're all homophobic. Oh, so this guy's woke. It's like you just automatically go from did you call him homophobic? Like, oh, okay, so this is a woke nerd. And then you're all, whatever, you know. You basically take the impact of anything they say down 50% from there, even though, uh, you know. I, they just don't understand Sean, right? Like, they don't understand Sean at all. If Sean had a gay teammate, he would roll with him. He would be friends with him. He would go shooting with him on the weekend. He would break his balls for being gay like a friend would, you know. They, that, that's what Strickland's like. You know, anyway, but we'll get into that. And then also we are going to talk about uh, Marab, where we're going to start actually is with Marab uh, removing his own stitches and Dana responding to that because that also uh, gives me, you know, a seam into talking about the sphere, which uh, I just watched a video this morning still has a lot of unsold tickets, uh, which is understandable, but I just watched another thing about the sphere and I, I just, I have to talk about this show. Bottom line, because I was going to go for 100% sure when they announced it, like no question I was going. I said, as long as two tickets cost less than this number, I'm going. And then when they came out, they cost a little bit less than that. And I was like, man, I don't know, dude. And I know why. And I think a lot of people are uh, looking at it exactly the same. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, And then obviously we've got to talk about Marab, this thing that Marab is so dumb. So dumb what he did. So dumb what he did. So let's just start uh, right there, actually. Let's start with uh, Marab and his, uh, you know, removing his stitches. And I will tell you exactly why I would look heavily down upon this, like, right this second based on my own life. Let's watch. Next to Marab Dvajvili removing his own stitches. Dano recently went off on Marab for posting his cut to social media. Now, a week later, Marab has taken matters into his own hands with a massive pair of scissors. Okay, just right out of the gate. Those are office scissors. Those are like cut paper at the front desk of the Performance Institute scissors. Now, how is this relevant? And what was I talking about when I said I uh, alluded to something in my own life, right? So remember I told you guys that I took a gi across the bottom of the nose that someone was, you know, they were just trying to choke me with it and it went across the bottom of my nose. So uh, here's the deal. Here's what happened. Burnt, and I am eight years old, so I can't not touch things, you know? So it's like, ow, this hurts. Touch, 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 touch. And they got wildly infected, okay? So uh, I had to go to the doctor. I'm on a course of doxycycline right now, which is about as fun as, um, you know, the six days in between your HIV test and the results. You know what I mean? Not That's a weird, you know what I mean? I, like, it sucks. I feel awful, okay? I hate antibiotics. But... Uh, I also got swabbed for staff because I had staff on my hand a few months ago. And so it, you know, seemed like common sense. There was a high probability that maybe 
I put staph into a wound and then this did, you know, this happened on the bottom of my nose. Okay, well, I just got the results back today. It's not staph, so I'm good to train. But nonetheless, okay, so right at top of mind for me is staph in wound, okay? Staph in wound. It is the end of August, okay? That is, those scissors, you, you think that he put those through some kind of sterilization project or project process like any doctor would before they put, I'm not saying he, he wouldn't be able to successfully cut the, cut the stitches out and pull them, but there's big reasons for why you don't do that yourself that have nothing to do with the size of the scissors, you know, the surgical nature of the scissors or the fact that uh, you have someone else doing it. And one of them, of course, is sterilization. And if that becomes an infected staph thing over your eye or some other kind of infection, you can't fight, dude. You know what I mean? It's just as simple as that. You can't fight. And uh, I'm going to let Dana talk about it a little bit for himself. Uh, and But this is going to get us right into the conversation about the sphere because bottom line, if Marab is off this card... We got serious problems here. I don't know if they have a. I don't know if they have a backup fighter. If Marab was up, that would be way less bad than, um, you know, if uh, if O'Malley was. But come on, dude, they have no one else on this card. Okay, no other big draws are on this card at all. You, you, Marab needs to make this fight. O'Malley really needs to make the fight, but Marab too. Let's so let's watch Dana respond. In the aftermath of Tuesday's episode of Dana White's Contender Series, the UFC president was asked about Marab's latest antics online. This time, White showed no fury and mostly just chuckled about the entire situation. Uh, obviously referring to Marab Devalishvili once again taking to social media to... Uh... Isn't he awesome? I think he's just f***ing with me now, to be honest with you. Have, have you spoken directly to him? I mean, obviously you went, you were pretty public in what you said, but have you reached out to him and said, bro, what are you thinking? Or No. Do what you want. Do what you want. All right, we'll leave. Did you ever see the scissors they take stitches out with? They don't look like those. Usually. He's like, he's all, do whatever you want, dude. I'm not, I'm not going to blow up again. He's like, they're tiny. And they have that thing on there so you don't cut yourself. You know what I mean? They can slide them up under the stitches and you don't cut yourself. And this dude had like f***ing bush shears that he was using uh, that you, you know, you trim your f***ing bushes with. The gardeners use. Whatever. Good for him. Allah Muhammad trolls. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I am going to go out on a limb here and say that he is less amused than he is leading on. But I think that... Uh, you know, he he got really mad last time. It was a meme, and he's just probably like, I'm not gi I'm not giving him the satisfaction this time. If he ends up off this card, I'm going to destroy his career. You know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, he is right. Dana's right. Like, there's no... Ri at the very least, at the very least, sterilize the scissors and use, you know, good ones that you're not going to accidentally cut yourself with. And if, if he got those, if he got those scissors at a gym which seems almost like a certainty to me. He looks like he's outside of a gym. If he got those in a gym, then that means you are around a bunch of people who are grappling and are 100 times more likely to have some kind of infection on their hands or on their whatever. And then they're touching the scissors. Those are probably the least safe scissors to cut a wound with ever if you're trying not to get staff. Uh, anyway, all right. So now let's... Uh, Let's talk about the sphere really quick, okay? So I saw today that the sphere is still not sold out. And again, I just want to talk about my own experience here because like I said, I was definitely going to go, like a thousand percent. And I probably am going to go now after listening to Dana talk more about it. It sounds like it really is going to be the most absolutely incredible experience in the world. Here's the thing though. The reason why the, the tickets are not selling is because they're so expensive and they cut the prices a lot. They basically halved the prices. They're half price now. And, um, but they started at $3,000, you know, like the, I mean, <laughs> I sat in the front row of one of the lower sections, you know, right above the, uh, right above the floor seats for UFC 300. Like I can I considered this like um, bucket list, you know, and I paid four G's for each ticket. That's not a flex. I'm just giving you context, like, you know, of where we were and what we paid. So at the Sphere, I've never been there. So I don't know, you know, like whatever, but like the cheapest seats in the place, okay, were going to be 
over three thousand dollars and then plus fees you're probably close to four thousand per ticket and like in the description it says you know um uh partially obstructed view and you're like do you know what I mean? And it was like, wow. I was just so caught off guard by the price that I was like, man, maybe I'm not going to go. Because you can't help yourself. If you are a UFC fan, you're going to look at the card, right? Now, O'Malley is probably, I mean, certainly at the in the conversation for my favorite fighter, okay? I love watching O'Malley fight. I have always loved watching O'Malley fight. If you, if you want to build the most exciting fighter to watch in the entire organization, that's your guy, at least for me. He's also a superstar. And as much as people are like, oh, well, he's not that big of a draw, that's why they're not selling, which is not an unfair assessment given the situation because if it was Conor McGregor at the top of the bill, these are sold out on the first day. But when you watch how he carries it in those situations, like the, I got, I get goosebumps just thinking about this. You remember the first time he fought on a pay-per-view and he was the opening card and he went and he walked up onto the octagon and turned around and went like this. And they had this incredible shot of it, dude. Like they had like, a, like whoever, whoever did that shot with the crane, incredible. Right. And it's, I mean, seriously, like I get goosebumps thinking about it. And I was like, man, that guy is a star. I mean, he, I've been with him before he even got injured for the two years. Um, well, you, you know, or hurt his foot, and then he had the thing with the whatever. So, if you look though, and it's just O'Malley, and then you look at the rest of the card, you're like, man, there's not even a single other fight that I'm like, man, I I I gotta see in terms of like the level of stars. Now I understand why they spent twenty million dollars so far on the on the show. Twenty million dollars, okay? That's before they pay a single fighter. So it is wildly expensive. When you watch Conor McGregor fights, that's why there's no one expensive on the undercard. Guarantee if you see someone with a big name on, you know, on the rest of, you know, on the on the main card that is fighting underneath Conor McGregor, rest assured, they're making less money than you think. Because Conor costs so much, you know? And so Marab, there's no way Marab is making a fortune. There's no one that makes big money on that card, and that's why they spent 20 million. So even though in my mind, I know the show is going to be incredible. You have guys that are going to make for insane fights. My brain won't allow me to pay that much for the tickets because I'm like, man, there's no one really, you know what I mean? Again, I think I'm back on the, on the train that I am going to go though, because uh, now Dana explained that it is really once in a lifetime because they only did it because the MGM has been dicking around with them. I don't know. I mean, like if Dana has personally put this much effort into the show and and I hung out with uh I, I have a buddy at UFC Brass like a really a, you know big insider in the room with Dana and these guys and he told me that Dana's sole focus his only focus for the last few months has been on the Sphere show now as a fan of the sport and as you know Dana being basically the I don't know the most inspiring entrepreneur ever who I'm essentially certain I would be best friends with if we hung out. I don't think any, I don't think there's anyone who could relate to me more than Dana when it comes to like, I really, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to say this. I can't, I don't, that guy can go fuck himself. I like, I can't, I can't. That's, that's him. Except he never has any reason to have to like try to temper himself. You know what I mean? I think he and I would basically agree on every single topic that has ever been. So when it comes to him, I got to be honest with myself. Like, how am I going to not go? I know I don't feel like I need to go. And at the same time, I'm like, I know, I know that if I don't go, I'm going to talk to people who were there and they're going to be like, you can't even wrap your brain around what you missed out on, you know? So I'm probably going to go. I think I'm going to bring my buddy, Jeff. He doesn't know that yet though. Cause he's jumping out of helicopters in Panama right now. So, uh, anyway, so that is where I'm at on that. And, uh, that's why Marab dicking around with his stitches is dumb. And the main event. Let's go. MGK goes off on Sean Strickland. Ooh, Sean, I can't believe you let him get away with that, dude. I can't believe you let him get away with that. You know what's funny? I Whenever I think about Sean Strickland, just his personality, I seriously think that he's like Tommy from Goodfellas, you know? Like if you're at like a, a card game and Sean is constantly breaking some guy's balls like the waiter or something like that, and then one day the waiter goes, hey, why don't you go F yourself, Sean? And you're like, 
You're going to let him get away with that? Hey, Sean, you're going to let him get away with that? What's the world coming to? I think Sean gets up and goes and beats the guy half to death or smokes him if it's uh, if it's like Goodfellas. And you're all, dude, we were just joking. He's all, what, man? What, you said he was pressing me. And you're like, it was a joke, man. Anyway, so let's watch MGK go off on Strickland. MGK breaks silence and lets loose on Sean Strickland. The beef between Machine Gun Kelly and Strickland started back in February during a power slap event where Strickland told MGK to dress like a f***ing man. Sean then took text questioning Megan Fox's rationale for dating MGK. Now, just a few days ago, Strickland's made headlines once again, tweeting, So there was a point when black guys were cool, and I think the downfall was when they accepted MGK into the community. Shit got real questionable after MGK. Little gay, little satanic. I don't know. Maybe it was the blood drinking. All right. So let's listen to what MGK actually said about Sean Strickland. Logan Paul's impulsive podcast on Tuesday, addressing Strickland's comments and telling him to stop. I don't know this guy from a crumb of bread, right? I, I didn't know who he was when I met him. I got hip afterward that he's like insanely racist and homophobic and just not my type of guy. So I would have never even wanted to shake hands with him in the first place. But he also is just a representative of every person who's too scared to just be themselves because if you're comfortable as yourself you don't care who anybody else is he's so dumb that i'm gonna tell him right now you should not keep saying stuff because it just makes me look better but you're going to keep saying stuff so i know that you'll react and say more things but you're you just shouldn't as <laughs> as a person who's just giving you big bro advice learn this shut the f up and don't <laughs> don't speak on me anymore and live your life but you won't and i'm going to continue laughing at you because you're a an idiot strickland <laughs> Ooh. listen that's a good comment i mean here's the thing dude this is the honest reality my reaction to that and i'm going to read you what actually here let me get this on screen so i can read it after. applied oh sorry that's not what i meant to do so listen dude that's not a bad, that's not a bad, uh, not a bad come up on, uh, on MGK's part, because believe it or not, outside of, well, not even outside of our world, who would win in a fight is not a thing that actually matters once you're a little bit older than like, you know, a certain age. Okay. Sean can't beat up MGK. You guys understand this? Like Sean is not allowed to beat up MGK. Now in certain people's minds, the fact that they know Sean would destroy MGK in a fight. He wins automatically. I think that really is how Sean thinks. Like, seriously. Like, I think Sh I think there's, like, nothing that could happen that could supersede the fact that if they got in a fist fight, Sean would win. Okay? Why else would Sean want to beat up Sneeko? You know? Why else would Sean... I mean, like, why else does Sean want to just beat Mitch Aguilar for 25 minutes? He's like, he's making a point. He's like, I am the man. And in the way that he views the world, he is. He is. You got a handful of people on earth that can beat him in a fist fight, period. But like, that's not how MGK sees the world at all. MGK's like, so what, bro? You know? Like to MGK, he's like, I could pay someone two grand and have you killed in five seconds. Okay? I'm in the Illuminati. You making fun of me drinking blood? You want to know what I got for drinking blood? Uh, an army of assassins that'll kill you for nothing and then an entire police force that'll make sure I don't get caught. Okay? You think I drink blood for nothing? You think I'm a satanic Satan worshiper for no reason? I could get rid of you like a crumb on my shirt. You are irrelevant to me. You win in a fight, then I'll just kill other people that you love. Then I'll kill you. You know, like in his mind, if you want to go to violence, but if you don't want to go to violence, he's just like, you don't even exist to me. I'm a rock star. You're a, no you're, you're a nobody. I don't even know who you are. And that, so it's like, they can both win at the same time. Should be a win-win, you know? But uh, anyway, Shirkin says, getting lectured by a guy who drinks blood and wears a purse. Dog, I wear a purse, but a man purse. And so that's actually kind of weird. Like Sean's in, Mar maybe it's different in Vegas. Everybody who does jujitsu that in, in my, everybody wears man purses, but that's because we all carry guns in them. But, uh, and then, or also just because, you know, like, why would you not? I want to put all that. I don't want to carry shit around in my pockets. Anyway. Dog, you had a midlife crisis and tattooed your entire body. The the uh, the ex community of intolerance. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, y'all. I'd hang out with you toxic trolls any day of the week over this C U N T. Go back to cutting yourself, you freaking weirdo. See, you can tell this doesn't bother Sean at all. 
Like you can tell, both of these guys think they won this. I'm all, I'm totally serious. Sean and usually, usually someone knows they lost. You know, someone knows they lost. Bottom line, in this case, I really believe that both these guys think they won because neither of them gives a single solitary fuck about each other. M to MGK. Sean is a speck of like dust in the wind. He doesn't give a shit. And to Sean, MGK, he's like, he's a fucking rock star that dresses dressed like a girl. Like, so they're so on each other's, like on the other end of the world from each other that they just, they don't, they're, so they both get to think that they won. It's a good thing. I don't think either. I think they both won too. You know, this kind of dumb shit is all in the eye of whoever, you know, is involved. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's what I got. I love you guys. Bye-bye.